like a lot of writers, I'm very interested in putting little sprinkles of realism into my novels. And given the fact that most of my novels are set at the beginning of the 20th century, something like famous brand names and their origins is something I'm definitely going to be very interested in. This book, I received as a gift and read it within a couple of days. It's so compelling and full of a lot of really fascinating information. This is a British book. Most of the brands in it are British. There are some international ones. And what I really liked about this is that it isn't just kind of food and drink. I thought it would be, but it actually covers so many things. It covers obviously food, drinks, um, other kind of grocery products, and then household items, hygiene and cleaning products, high street stores. It goes into the origins of quite a few high street stores, some of which I already knew about such as Sainsbury's, um, and W.H. Smith. I'm not going to kind of go into any detail about any of the content covered because, you know, that's part of the fun of exploring the origins of these brands that we know and love. Um, did you know there used to be a Terry's Chocolate Lemon? That's the only tidbit I'll give you. I'm very surprised. Can't even imagine what that would taste like. Um, but yes, W.H. Smith was originally called something very slightly different, and that's something that I found quite interesting because I love... W.H. Smith's in train stations. I just think they're, you know, my favourite place to hang out while waiting for a train if they don't have a Starbucks. So the origins of those I found really great. Um, but it also covers toys and travel as well. The toy section, uh, there's a very interesting fact about Frank Hornby, the founder of Hornby, with regards to his political position back in the day. I won't spoil it, but I learned a lot of fun facts so it's split up into those sections. So if you're only interested in a few parts, you can skip through it. In terms of the time periods it covers, we have things from the late 19th century. The majority of things, I'd say, are from around about the 30s, 40s, 50s. Um, I think there might have been a few things more recent than that. But certainly they're not brands that are just quite recent. They do have a lot more historical information about them, which I found really interesting. Kathy Martin, um, the writer of the book, I'm not 100% sure of her background. I would assume she's got some kind of historian background. But certainly I got the impression that she knows exactly what she's talking about. Um, and there's an awful lot of research gone into this. It's not just a few little tidbits. Some of them have really detailed narratives. Obviously, some of them just have little kind of a few sentences about it because there's not that much information available. But where possible, we do get a lot of brand history, anecdotes, information about the people who set up the companies, any changes the companies went through or the brand names. Can you guess which brand has the Guinness World Record for the least changed packaging? I don't know why there's a record for that, um, but you can find out in the book. I was quite, quite surprised. But then when I thought about it, I thought, yeah, actually, that makes perfect sense. I really, truly loved this book from start to finish. It's very well written. I didn't spot a single typing error. I spotted one missing comma, and that is it. And that may sound like a really petty thing, but when you edit for a living, you kind of can't help but pick these things up. Um, and, and that was the only thing I spotted. So it's very well edited, proofread, published. The book quality is brilliant. It's published by uh, Pen and Sword History and was released in 2016. So it's... Um, you know, still relatively up to date. I don't think there were any brands in this that are now extinct. There wasn't anything that I recognised that has gone downhill in the last five years or so. Really, really fascinating. If you love history, particularly contem contemporary history, oxymoron, um, more recent history from the kind of late 19th, early 20th, I think you'll find it really interesting. If you're a writer, I think it's a must read just to get these little snapshots to bring history to life a bit. But if you just want something fun that's full of really fascinating facts, famous brand names and their origins is absolutely one I'm very happy to recommend.